Welcome to Educator.com. In the past four lectures, we've discussed various conic sections, parabolas, circles, ellipses, and hyperbolas. And this lecture is designed to bring that information together and to give you some context about this. First of all, what are conic sections? So we know we can name them. We know what they are. But where do they come from? Well, they are literally sections of a cone. So when you take a double cone, it's actually a double cone, as follows, with the, the points together, and you section them, or sectioning is slicing. When you take slices of them using a plane, you come up with these four types of curves. So as you can see, when you take a plane and section or slice the cone across, you're going to end up with a circle. If you tip that plane at an angle, the result is an ellipse. If you encompass the edge of the cone, you end up with a parabola. And if you slice through in such a way that you capture the edges of both cones, then you end up with a hyperbola, and there you can see the two branches. So this is where conic sections come from, and they have many applications in science. We've talked about the standard form of each conic section. For example, the standard form of a circle or the standard form of, of an ellipse. This standard form that I'm talking about now is a very general form. So it's, it gives you a general equation, ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus cy plus f equals zero. So what we're going to do in a minute is talk about how you can look at this general form and determine which type of conic section you're working with so that you can put it in the equation in the standard form particular to that type of conic section. And we, as we've been going through, I've mentioned some ways that you can tell if you just have an equation in a general form what type of conic section you're working with. And now I'm going to bring that all together. OK. if b equals 0, we can analyze that standard form of the conic section to determine what type of conic section the equation represents. Looking back at that general standard form, again, ax squared plus bxy plus cy squared plus dx plus cy plus f equals 0. Here, we're having the limitation that b equals 0. And throughout this course, when we've worked with conic sections, we've only worked with ones where b is 0. When b is 0, you end up with this. Once you have this standard form, then you can go ahead and analyze it in ways we're going to discuss in a minute to determine which type of conic section you have, the equation describes. But let's talk for a minute about what bxy tells you. So far, we've worked with shapes such as parabolas. And some were oriented vertically, some horizontally. We also worked with ellipses, some horizontal major axis, some had a vertical major axis, and the same with hyperbolas. So even though the center may have been shifted, these were all either strictly vertical or strictly horizontal. What this bxy term does is it rotates it so that instead of, say, having an ellipse that's got a completely vertical major axis or horizontal major axis, you could end up with an ellipse like this. It's at an angle. The major axis is at an angle. Or a parabola that is like this. And that's definitely more complicated to work with. And it doesn't allow us to complete the square then to shift an equation from the general form to a specific standard form. So later on, if you continue on in math, you may end up working with these shapes. But for this course, we're limiting it to conic sections that are either vertical, or horizontal, but they're not tipped at, at any other type of angle. In order to identify conic sections, you need to look at the coefficients of the x squared and y squared terms. So let's rewrite this. And again, the assumption is that b equals 0. 
So I'm just going to have ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. Parabola. Recall that with a parabola, you have an x squared term or a y squared term, but not both. Therefore, either a is 0, so this drops out, or c is 0, so this drops out. An example would be something like x equals 3y squared plus 2y plus 6. Or you might have y equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 8. So neither of these has both an x squared and a y squared term in the same equation. For a circle, recall that what you're going to end up with is an x squared and a y squared term on the same side of the equation with the same sign, and they're going to have the same coefficients. Therefore, a is going to equal c. An example would be x squared plus y squared plus 3x minus 5y minus 10 equals 0. Here, a equals 1 and c equals 1. Those are the same coefficients. x squared and y squared have the same sign and the same side of the equation, so it's a circle. If we're working with an ellipse, this time the x squared term and y squared terms are going to be on the same side of the equation with the same sign like with a circle, but a and c are different. They are unequal. That tells me that I'm working with an ellipse. For example, 12x squared plus 9y squared plus 25x plus 28y plus 40 equals 0. Here I have a equals 12 and c equals 9. So this is the equation describing an ellipse. Finally, with a hyperbola, these are pretty straightforward to recognize because you're going to have an x squared term and a y squared term, but they're going to have opposite signs. So their coefficients will have opposite signs. For example, 4x squared minus 8y squared plus 10x plus 6y minus 34 equals 0. So I have a equals 4 and c equals negative 8. Since a and c have opposite signs, this is an equation describing hyperbola. So you can use these rules to allow you to identify conic sections when you're given an equation in what we're going to call general form. It's standard form, but it's a very, it's a general standard form for any type of conic section. Okay, now we're going to work on identifying the various conic sections by looking at their equations. First, write in standard form and identify the conic section. Okay, so standard form, general standard form is what I'm talking about right now, is x squared plus 2y squared. I need to subtract 4x from both sides, subtract 12, and set everything equal to 0. What this tells me is that I have a equals 1 and c equals 2. Since a equals 1 and c equals 2, these have the same sign, the x squared and the y squared terms, but they have different a and c, they have different coefficients, and that means that what I'm working with is an ellipse. You could go on then and write this in the specific standard form for an ellipse. So let's do that by completing the square. Start out by grouping, let's rewrite it here, and then let's group the x and the y terms. So x squared terms grouped together, y terms grouped together. And now add 12 to both sides to move that over to make completing the square a little bit easier. To complete the square for x squared minus 4x, I need to add b squared plus 4, b squared divided by 4. b squared divided by 4 is equal to 4 squared divided by 4 is 16 divided by 4, it's 4. So I add x squared minus 4x plus 4, and it's very important to remember to add the 4 to the right side as well. There's no 
uh, term out here, there's no factor out here that I don't need to multiply, it's just one. So four times one is four. So that gives me 12 plus four. All right, that's x squared minus four x plus four plus two y squared equals 16. This can be written as x minus two squared plus two y squared equals 16. But recall in standard form for an ellipse, you need to have a one on the right. So rewriting this up here and then dividing both sides by 16. This is just x minus two quantity squared divided by 16. This will cancel, this will become eight. And then 16 divided by 16 is one. So we started out with this equation, put it into the general standard form to identify that this is an ellipse, and then went on to complete the square. And now I have it written in standard form specifically for an ellipse, which is much more useful when you're working with that and trying to graph. This time, without completing the square, all we're gonna do is identify the conic section. And this is already in standard form. Therefore, A equals two, C equals negative three. Since A and C have opposite signs, this is a hyperbola. This is a, the equation for a hyperbola. So I have an X squared term and a Y squared term, both, so it's not a parabola. They have opposite signs. Therefore, it must describe a hyperbola. Okay, write in standard form and identify the conic section. Right now, this is not in any type of standard form, so I'm gonna work with the general standard form. First, I'm gonna subtract 36x squared from both sides. Then, I'm gonna subtract 128 from both sides. This means that I have A equals negative 36 and C equals 16. Since these two are opposite signs, this is an equation describing hyperbola. Okay, now let's go ahead and put this in standard form specific to a hyperbola. And let's start out by moving this 128 back over to the right. This is actually 32. Next, I do have a common factor of four, so I'm gonna divide both sides by that so that I'm working with smaller numbers. That's negative nine x squared plus four y squared plus eight y equals 128 divided by four would give 32. All right, now to make this uh, m already move it more towards looking like a hyperbola, I'm gonna put the positive terms here in front. 4y squared plus 8y minus 9x squared, because I'm gonna have a difference. To complete the square, I first need to factor out that four. Then I need to add b squared over four to this expression. This is gonna equal two squared divided by four. That's four divided by four, which is one. Here's where I need to be careful because I need to make sure I add four times one to the right, which is four, to keep the equation balanced. At this point, I'm gonna rewrite this as y plus one squared minus nine x squared equals 36. The last step is I want the right side to, to be one. So I'm gonna divide both sides by 36. Four goes into 36 nine times. Nine goes into 36 four times. And then this cancels out to one. Okay, so I started out with an equation that wasn't in any kind of standard form. I put it in general standard form, and then determined it was a hyperbola, completed the square, and ended up with an equation in the standard form for a hyperbola so that I can use that to graph the hyperbola if needed. 
write in standard form and identify the conic section. So this is almost in the general standard form, but not quite. So I have 4x squared. I need to move this negative 3y squared next, then negative 16x minus 18y minus 12 equals 0. Now I can easily see that a equals 4 and c equals negative 3. Since these have opposite signs, that means that this is an equation describing hyperbola. Okay, next task is to complete the square. I'm going to first add 12 to both sides to remove the constant from the left side. Then I'm going to group the x terms, which is 4x squared minus 16x. And then I have a negative 3y squared minus 18y, and that all equals 12. I have a leading coefficient that is something other than 1, so I'm going to factor out the 4, leaving behind x squared minus 4x. Here, I need to factor out a negative 3. That's going to leave behind y squared plus 6y. You need to be careful with the signs here. Just double checking, negative 3 times y squared is negative 3y squared. Negative 3 times positive 6y is negative 18y. When you factor out with that negative sign, equals 12. Completing the square, b squared over 4 in this case is 4 squared divided by 4 is 16 divided by 4. That's 4. So I'm going to add 4 here. I'm also going to add 4 times 4, or 16, to the right to keep the equation balanced. For the y expression, I have y squared plus 6y. Therefore, b squared over 4 equals 6 squared divided by 4, which is 36, divided by 4, which is 9. Negative 3 times 9, negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. So I'm going to subtract 27 from the right side, again, keeping the equation balanced. Rewriting this as x minus 2 quantity squared, minus 3 times y plus 3 quantity squared equals 16 plus 12 is 28 minus 27. Conveniently, I end up with a 1 on the right. Now, this is almost in standard form. Generally, with standard form for a hyperbola, we're going to have um, this term would be in the denominator. So it is possible to rewrite it like this, and it might be easier to look at it that way so that you can immediately know, okay, this is a squared, instead of having to think it out. So putting it in truly standard form is also a good idea. Because recall that if I have the numerator divided by 1 fourth, that's the same as this times 4. And that tells me that I have a hyperbola with a center at 2, negative 3. You've got to watch out for this positive sign. And it has a horizontal transverse axis. So today we learned how to, we learned exactly what conic sections are, where they, they come from, and how to look at an equation and determine what type of conic section that it describes. So thanks for visiting educator.com. See you again soon.